let's just say the activity inside of me, which is what I now call inner space, began to slow down and decongest to such a degree that, that I was able to see what was really going on. And sometimes it was almost like it was in slow motion, and sometimes it was just I could really see what was going on. And what I began to see is that if you say to yourself, what is it? that is appearing, again, my label in inner space that I call an emotion. What is it? And it's, it's a pretty mysterious something that's almost impossible to define. But the best word that I could come up with, and I'm not the only one that uses this word, many other people do, is that it's energy. It's, it's energy that appears to move in a certain way and have certain kind of characteristics. You could almost think of it like water that moves in certain ways, and sometimes it's still as glass, sometimes it's moving a little bit, sometimes it's a tidal wave, and sometimes it's body surfing kind of size waves, you know? So I began to look and I began to see there's something inside of me that's moving uh, or vibrating or whatever in unique ways, and that's what it is that I'm calling an emotion. And then I began to see something else very interesting. I began to see that there was this movement of energy that has unique characteristics, that I call the pure, raw experience. And then there's a story about it. This particular movement of energy in inner space is called anger, and it feels bad. This particular movement of energy in inner space is called excitement, and it feels good. This particular movement of energy that has unique characteristics is called depression, and it feels bad. And we all have hundreds, thousands, whatever, as unique individuals, it varies, of labels and judgments for this movement of energy. And I began to see that two things were going on in inner space. There was the movement of energy, actually three things. There's the movement of energy, there's the story about it, anger, bad, excitement, good, depression, bad, whatever. And then there's this hybrid that gets created when the story bonds or fuses with the, um, the energy and then we say, I'm angry, and this doesn't feel good. I'm happy, and I feel good. But there's three things going on. There's the energy by itself, which isn't good or bad or pleasurable or, or painful or comfortable or uncomfortable. Mm. It's just a movement of energy that's mm. unique. Then there's the story, and then there's the bonding of the two. And what most of us experience is the bonding of the two. And what I discovered is it is possible to live in uh, your daily life. It's not a technique. It becomes the natural, consistent experience where you just experience the movements of energy and with all of their infinite variety, but there isn't any story. Mm. There isn't any label. It, you, you, the, the word anger doesn't show up anymore. The word excitement doesn't show up anymore. The word depression doesn't show up anymore. Good, bad, positive, negative, comfortable, painful doesn't show up anymore. You're just experiencing this energy in its pure, raw state. So you're, you're saying there's energy, then there's the story of the energy, then there's the bonding, the, the hybrid of the two. And I think you're saying identification. Is that what you mean by bonding, where you identify with the story? You believe that the story is true. It's kind of like if you look at what water is from a chemical perspective, it's molecules of hydrogen and oxygen that mix together. But when you see water in a glass, in a lake, in an ocean, whatever, you don't see hydrogen and oxygen. You just see water. That's the hybrid that the two create. The, water, the hydrogen is still there. The oxygen is still there. But you can't see it. All you can see is water, what they create when they bond together. Similarly, the energy is there, and the energy is always positive. It always feels good, so to speak. Mm. And then the story's there, but then they disappear like hydrogen and oxygen disappear, and you just see water, which is the story appearing to be real. And yes, you could say identification. Okay, the thing now, that's so really interesting about this is, like everything else, this is not a theory. This is something not only that you can experience, but that you, Ben, and everyone else listening has experienced thousands of times without realizing the significance of it. And I'll give you three examples. When you watch a great movie in the two hours you're in the theater, you experience all kinds of emotions. They move through you really quickly. But you don't stop to say, oh, that was anger and it felt bad. Oh, that was happiness and that feels good. Oh, that was fear and that felt bad. You don't stop to label them. You don't stop to judge them. You just feel them. 
what mm. I call the pure raw experience. And you just feel these pure raw movements of energy nonstop, because that's really what a movie's all about, pretty much, you know, for two hours. And then afterwards you go, oh my God, that was an amazing experience if you really liked the movie. But the mind, so to speak, the story never showed up and the story never bonded with the energy. You just felt the energy. The same thing happens if you're reading a really great novel. You experience all kinds of emotions, but you don't stop to label them or judge them. The story does not appear, and it therefore doesn't bond with the energy. You just experience the energy, and then you say, oh, my God, I love that book. The third example is if you like roller coasters at amusement parks or you like other rides that move fast. If you could catalog all of the emotions that you felt, you would have a lot of labels, including negative labels, that you'd apply, but you don't do that. The story does not appear. It does not bond to the emotion. You just experience raw emotion for however long the ride is, and then if you liked it, at the end of it, you go, oh, my God, that was incredible. i got to go do that again. Now, now, contrast that with how most of us live our lives. Most of us live our lives, and there's an aspect of the mind, if you will, that has learned to observe particular movements of energy, to label them with specific words, happy, sad, excited, depressed, you know, frustrated, whatever. And it, it has developed all these stories. It has them stored in its computer, you know, like Google has a database that it searches when you type in a search at Google. And so on automatic pilot, without us realizing it, we're experiencing these emotions, we're seeing them, the story's coming up, it's bonded, and we're hypnotized into thinking the story's true. Got to take a break. That's awesome stuff, Robert. We're talking to Robert Scheinfeld, author of The Ultimate Key to Happiness. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're coming back at you right after this. Don't go away. My name is Kay Swirling, and I am in the early part of my 10th decade. I want to discuss the issue of pharmaceuticals versus minerals and vitamin supplements. I remember a discussion between my mother and me. It was at that time that canned vegetables and fruits were introduced into the U.S. market. It was some time before my mother and others felt comfortable with food in cans. That was also the time when drugstores offered for sale cough syrup and aspirins and not much else. Let's fast forward to this decade, the here and now. Simple drugstores are large corporations with the message that they are the ones who have the power to cure human ills. Meanwhile, the battle continues with minerals and vitamins being the answer to human ills. Who will win the battle? I believe and hope it will be the belief in the power of vitamins and minerals over that of the toxic chemicals in prescription drugs. What do you think? So we decided to upgrade the look of our home. You know, improve the curve appeal. We decided to add the look of stone to the exterior. We really like the stacked stone look. Yeah, but when I checked into the price, it was ridiculous. No way could we afford it. Then a friend told me about Genstone. G-E-N-S-T-O-N-E. Genstone comes in lightweight panels made of polyurethane. They've actually engineered the hassle out of installation. No mortar, no mesh. It was easy. Even I could do it. We just screwed the panels to the wall and it looks like stone. Stone. I mean, it really looks like stone. Yeah, from the box to the wall in minutes. We love the look of our home now. And Genstone is durable, comes with a 25-year warranty, and offers additional R-value for insulation. If you want the look of stone at a price you can afford, call Genstone. At 855-955-STONE. Trust me, you'll save money. And you'll love the look. 855-955-STONE. That's 855-955-7866. If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pilla, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX 
or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. We all know that Berkey Water Purification Systems are the most trusted name in water filtration. As an authorized Berkey dealer for over six years and serving thousands of satisfied customers, the Berkey Guy offers amazing specials for Berkey Water Filtration Systems. The Berkey Light Systems include a set of self-sterilizing and recleanable black purification elements that purify water by removing chlorine, pathogenic bacteria, cysts and parasites to non-detectable levels and remove harmful chemicals such as herbicides and pesticides. Order the Berkey Light Systems system today complete with two black Berkey elements for only $231 and the Berkey guy will ship your order free of charge. With the purchase of a Berkey light, the Berkey guy is also offering a set of fluoride and arsenic filters for only $39.99. That's over 30% off the retail price. Call the Berkey guy at 1-877-886-3653. That's 1-877-886-3653. Or order online at GoBerkey.com. That's GoBerkey.com today. Independently leading the way for the nation. Compelling talk for every political persuasion. We are GCN. All right, we are back for one last segment with Robert Scheinfeld, author of The Ultimate Key to Happiness and the Busting Loose series of books, The Invisible Path to Success, The Eleventh Element, and uh, also has a neat blog, too. Robert, give out your website real quick before we, uh, before we run out of time. It's robertscheinfeld.com, and that's um, R-O-B-E-R-T-S-C-H-E-I-N-F, like Frank, E-L-D.com, uh, robertscheinfeld.com. And you have various programs that people can sign up for, classes that people can take online, correct? Yeah, I have a lot of online courses because I like to make what I do available to people all over the world without them having to travel, so usually... Um, I turn live events, but sometimes I do other things, and I create online experiences. And then from time to time, I do live events as well. All right. So uh, I would be absolutely remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about money, everybody's favorite subject. Everybody's got money problems, it seems like, anyway. you got a couple of interesting things that you say in the Busting Loose series of books. One of the most shocking uh, is that you can't win the money game. Tell us about that. What do you mean by the fact that you can't win the money game and the, the idea that it was designed to create failure? Well, once again, this is a gigantic topic for a few minutes, so let's okay. see what I can do to uh, abbreviate the answer. Uh, to win a game, you have to know what the uh, outcome is. You have to know what winning means. And one of the biggest problems with the money game is that nobody really, very few people have a clear, definable outcome of what winning really means. It tends to be this kind of airy-fairy, general, more money than I need, you know, enough money that I can do what I want. Um, you know, some people might say enough money to be able to have a passive income of da-da-da-da, but in general, there isn't a definable outcome. That's the first part. So you can't win a game if you don't really know what winning means. Secondly, even if you have a specific kind of a definition that has a specific kind of a number, um, most people don't ever achieve that number, or they achieve it temporarily but then lose it. It's unstable, you could say. Or the final thing which happens with the people that really seem to be winning the money game is, okay, they got plenty of money, they can pretty much do anything they want, but then there's something else in their life that just using general language is out of whack. They're lonely, they're unhappy. There's a famous quote from J. Paul Getty, the oil man, when he was the richest man in the world many years ago. And he said, I'm the richest man in the world as it relates to money, and I'm the poorest man in the world as it relates to free time. Hmm. He didn't even feel he had free time to read a novel or go to a movie. And so... In general, when you play the money game the way we are taught, you try to achieve this very, very not generally definable goal of winning, and you fail because, again, you don't achieve the goal. You get it, but you can't hold on to it. Or you get it, but you, and you hold on to it, but there's some major price that you pay so that you don't end up feeling as fulfilled or happy or uh, connected like or whatever winner. else that you want. And so for all those reasons... It's like it's like uh, dogs at the dog track that forever chase the rabbit but never catch it. 
So what's the way out? The way out relates to a lot of the things that we 